Hey guys, Anthony Sager, Alternative Autos. Um, now, I wanted to get straight to the point. I often get the question from a lot of people, um, how does a hybrid work? Now, a lot of the mainstream hybrids have been out for almost 20 years now. Uh, that started back in 1997 when Han or Toyota released their Prius in Japan and which came to the US in 2000. Now, the first hybrid in the US was actually this car right here behind me this 2000 uh, Honda Insight. Now mine is actually a 2002 model, but basically getting down to it, a lot of people ask how a hybrid works. Now they don't understand the technology, even though it is pretty mainstream by now, and many people have them, especially in California. There are tons of hybrids here, and there are tons of electric cars here too, and other things like natural gas cars, um, hydrogen electric cars, just Lots of different alternative fuels, of course, ethanol is a big one, biodiesel, uh, vegetable oil, certain things like that, but I'm going to be talking about hybrids today, especially. Now, this is going to go on my how does it work um, part of my playlists, and I'm going to be talking in relative terms to not only how does this hybrid work behind me right here, but how uh, all hybrids work and the different types of hybrids that you will see. Now let me start off with this particular hybrid. This was the first generation Insight, which I covered in my previous video. This is my own personal car. These are pretty rare. Uh, Honda only made about 17,000 units worldwide. It was mostly a real world test car and also kind of a prototype for the Honda Civic hybrid, which came out, I believe, in 2001 or 2002. Now this particular hybrid is from today's standards, not what we would really call a hybrid. Now, it does have that hybrid badging on the back, and it is so old that actually you had to explain to them what it was. It was a gasoline electric car. Now, this particular hybrid is probably the second worst of the hybrids in terms of how it works and its efficiency. Now, this is a what they call a mild hybrid. Now, there are four types of hybrid systems, and I should probably alliterate to you a little bit more on what each of those are. So, first of all, you have a parallel hybrid. A parallel hybrid is a car that uses its gasoline engine and electric motor to drive in parallel with each other, so they're both working at the same time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Now, pure parallel hybrids are cars uh, that use both engines at all times, whether you're going at fast speeds or low speeds or while you're sitting at a traffic stop. Usually, in that case, it would turn off the engine and the electric motor will kick in. Now, the second type of hybrid that I'm going to tell you is called a series hybrid. Now, a series hybrid is a car that uses its motors in series. So, for instance, the electric motor would start up first to basically get the car moving in a low speed manner and then the gas engine would kick in once the electric motor has hit its peak RPMs and to get that better efficiency and charge the battery. So that's what a series hybrid. Now a lot of modern hybrids are actually both a parallel and a series hybrid. They're parallel usually when you're driving at low highway speeds and then as soon as you get to those high highway speeds the electric motor is usually weaker and can't handle it and the gas engine would just drive by itself. However, it also is a series hybrid because most modern hybrids do turn off that engine and use the electric motor during that low speed current. Like for instance, the most um, popular, of course, is the Toyota Prius that we know and love today. Well, not everybody loves them, but they're pretty good cars. Now, the third car that I'm going to be talking about is this particular car right here that you see. The Honda Insight is what I told you earlier, is a mild hybrid, and so this system it's kind of a special system and it does kind of suck in the fact that you do have a battery in the back and you do have an electric motor. However, it is a ludicrously small electric motor producing about 14 horsepower and 36 pound-feet of torque at zero RPM. Now, electric motors are powerful no matter uh, what power they produce because of that instant torque that you get off the line. However, this car is a mild hybrid because it uses those motors sometimes at the same time, but usually not. And what I mean by that is, so this particular car was basically the first hybrid, and because of that, they were really experimenting with the technology, and so because of that, they kind of used the mild hybrid system. Now what that does is, basically, when I'm driving at low speeds, the engine will still be on. Even if I'm going one or two miles an hour, it will still be on. However, uh, when I stop, the engine will turn off, but the electric motors will not kick in. It will just have an auto stop feature for the engine. Now, 
Uh, the reason that it does this is to save efficiency, but the other reason is because this electric motor is not powerful enough to drive the car on its own. Now, if you do mod the car, uh, you can probably get the electric motor to drive the car up to a certain speed. I think I've seen videos of people getting it up to 35 miles an hour. So, in theory it could if you messed with the computers and whatnot to get it to do that. However, in the way that it was from the factory, the electric motor only aids in acceleration on this particular car. So if you were to floor the car or even if you touch the gas pedal even a little bit more than idle speed, then the electric motor will kick in and you will notice it. You'll notice it not for the horsepower because it hardly has any horsepower, but you'll notice it for that instant torque where your car will suddenly start moving at a faster rate and your engine still stays at the same speed. And the reason that they did this is because they wanted to make the gasoline engine of this car a primary function, primarily power for this car. However, they did not want to make the electric motor uh, work on its own as well, not only for to not overload it, but just other reasons in particular, like the fact that the particular battery in this car is a almost one kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride battery. And nickel batteries are not the best, and one kilowatt hour, that's not going to supply that many power. It's only it's only a 144 volt battery, so uh, it's not going to give that much power anyways. So because of what they had at the time, and what they were developing in terms of technology, that's why they chose the mild hybrid. Now this car does have regenerative braking, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's move down to the last hybrid in the segment, which would be what's called a micro-hybrid. Now, a micro-hybrid is not what you would assume a normal hybrid to be. A micro-hybrid is basically a gasoline car that, that does certain things with its battery and its alternator to kind of mimic sort of like a really cheap version of a hybrid to get the most efficiency. Like, for instance, BM, BMW has their efficient dynamics, which is essentially a micro-hybrid in the fact that that car does have regenerative braking but it only charges its 12 volt battery because it only has a 12 volt battery. So it uses that regenerative braking to capture the energy back into the battery so the alternator does not have to charge the battery. In fact, I don't even think the efficient dynamics has an alternator for that reason. However, it does have a starter and the regenerative braking also charges the battery for that starter as well. So things like that are what's called a microhybrid. Now there's certain other things that microhybrids do. I'm not going to get into it all, but that's basically the rundown of it is it kind of uses hybrid technology without actually having an electric drive motor. Um, and those are probably the worst. That's what's considered a one-mode hybrid, where basically it's not even a hybrid, it's just a gas car with regenerative braking. Um, and a two-mode hybrid is the three first ones I told you about. A parallel, a series, and a mild hybrid are all two modes. Uh, it can be, or actually, not a mild hybrid, no. Uh, those can all run in two modes, electric or gas, and then the mild and the micro-hybrids are one-mode hybrids. So now let's talk a little bit more about this particular car right here. Now, um, this car has what I call de generative braking. Now, a lot of people don't know what that is. Regenerative braking is a cool system in a car. Now, usually in this car, you can't really see my brake calipers uh, because there is very aerodynamic wheels on it. But usually you have your brake calipers to stop the car. Now, in this car... The reason that this has small wheels is not only for aerodynamics, but the fact that it hardly uses its brakes. And that's a cool thing because you save brake pads. Now, basically what regenerative braking is, is there's a lot of different systems that work in different ways, but I believe how Tesla's system works is probably the easiest to talk about basically how theirs works is when you're the when you take your foot off the accelerator gas pedal electric pedal whatever you want to call it depending on what you drive when you take your foot off the pedal the car will automatically start slowing down on its own and it basically puts the electric motor into reverse at least on a Tesla and basically uses that drive motor as a generator and generates power back into the battery and so because of that the electric motor going in reverse is slowing your car down at the same time so you're not using your brake pads and since it's being a generator it's putting battery power back into the battery it might be only like 10 or 20 percent of what you use to drive um, but it still gets some back and that's what's cool about it is that you your brakes last forever and you get some of your energy back every time you stop and most hybrids and basically all electric cars have regenerative braking um, 
Now, the reason that this particular car has regenerative braking is very vital to how it works because a mild hybrid, at least this one, is basically dependent on regenerative braking. Now, because this car only works um, in a uh, parallel mode where the electric motor will help under acceleration, the engine will not charge the battery unless it's dangerously low, then it will. However, it tries not to, and because of that, they put regenerative braking to charge the battery. So regenerative braking is the only way to charge your battery. Now, in most hybrid, people don't know this, but you don't have to plug them in. That's a whole new step above called a plug-in hybrid. Um, but these do not have to be plugged in, and because of that, that's the only way you can get battery power unless you want to waste that efficiency from your gas engine and use extra gas to charge your battery. Now, it's not a lot, but it still counts, especially in cars as aerodynamic and lightweight as this car. Uh, it definitely matters. Every MPG counts in these kind of cars. Um, so that's why this car regenerative braking is so important because in mild hybrids it is basically their lifeline and if you don't have regenerative braking your battery will not work or it will but you'll lose more gas mileage so it's actually probably doing more harm than better especially because when you charge uh, your battery just to use it upon acceleration it's no different than driving a normal gas car so that's why I say at least personally in my opinion mild hybrids and micro hybrids suck uh, if you were to get a hybrid get like a modern parallel or series hybrid Hybrid, um, or even a plug-in hybrid like my other car uh, it's actually just been totaled which really sucks but I had a Chevy Volt uh, which is a plug-in hybrid uh, it's actually a certain type of plug-in hybrid and we will talk about those cars later as I do um, reviews and videos on those as well but I just want to touch down on how hybrids work um, that's really the basics uh, let me know if you need to know anything else about them. I just kind of wanted to, you know, do a little rundown on how hybrids work. I mean, basically, um, in short, there's two two motors, electric motor, like you find in a fan or anything else, and a gas motor. They usually work side by side. You don't have to plug it in. It usually just charges by the braking and by the engine idling. Um, most hybrids will drive a slow speed with the electric motor and even higher speeds with both motors at the same time. Um, and they usually get between 40 and 60 miles to the gallon. Um, so that's really the basics that you have to know. Uh, I just wanted to make this video and put it as a how does it work segment on my YouTube channel because since I have this as a personal car, I thought, hey, it would be a good time to put one of those videos on. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, you know, ask me more questions. I love to answer questions in the comments and stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, I will be doing another video about this vehicle. It will be a um, driving video about how the vehicle drives, a little bit more on how that works in live action, um, and just so you guys can see firsthand uh, how the vehicle operates, um, how fast or slow it is, um, and you know, that kind of thing. So thanks for watching Alternative Autos. This is Anthony Sauger. I will see you guys next time. Bye.